Welcome to this video lecture about confidence intervals. We're going to begin by considering a confidence interval for a population mean. Now, when we want to estimate a population mean, typically what we do is we draw a sample from that population. We calculate the sample mean and we use the sample mean as an estimator of the population mean. So we want to know mu and we use x bar as an estimate of mu. But how close is this estimate? What kind of confidence can we associate with it? Well, in order to address this, we're going to use two things that we know already. The first thing we know is that sample means tend to be normally distributed. That's useful to know. And especially because of this second thing, we know how to associate probabilities with a normal distribution. We know, for example, that 95% of a normal distribution falls between the z-scores minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. So with 95% probability, a z-score will not exceed that, plus and minus 1.96. And if we just replace the word probability with the word confidence, we can say that with 95% confidence, a z-score will not exceed plus or minus 1.96. So putting all that together, we can state with 95% confidence that mu, a population mean, is equal to x bar, the mean of the sample, plus or minus 1.96 times sigma over root n, where sigma over root n is the standard error of the sample mean. So that's a great formula, and it allows us to estimate the mean of a population with confidence, provided that we know sigma the population standard deviation. That's the only weakness in this formula. Sometimes we do know sigma, the population standard deviation. We know it from past experience of studying that population or a similar population. But very often we don't know sigma. We don't know the standard deviation of the population. All we have is a sample. And so we can calculate S, the sample standard deviation, but that's not the same thing. Wouldn't it be great if we could somehow adjust this formula in a way that would allow us to use s rather than sigma, then we would have all the information we need in the sample. So we need some smart person to give us a way to uh, replace this formula with a formula that uses s rather than sigma. And where are we going to find that smart person? In Dublin, Ireland and in Guinness's brewery in particular. Welcome to the Guinness Storehouse and there's a plaque on the wall there to William Seeley Gossett who was a brewer and statistician. William Seeley Gossett who wrote under the pen name Student provided the answer to this problem. The Z score means how many standard deviations a value is away from the mean of a normal distribution. But the T score is how many S's, how many estimated standard deviations a value is away from the mean in a normal distribution. So uh, Gossert came up with this idea in 1908 and this provides us with this alternative formula for a confidence interval for a population mean. We say the mean mu equals x bar plus or minus t. We're using a t score instead of a z score. So a t distribution is like a normal distribution but you don't just happen to know the standard deviation. So it has the same familiar bell shape, but somewhat fatter tails because there's more uncertainty associated with it. In fact, there's a different T distribution for every different number of degrees of freedom, N minus one. And that's why we write the little subscript N minus one beside the T to remind you when you're finding a T value to find the appropriate one with the correct number of degrees of freedom. So we replace Z with T and more importantly, we replace Sigma with S. So now we have this formula and you might notice that on the right side of the formula, on the right of the equal sign, X bar comes from the sample, S comes from the sample, N comes from the sample, T comes from the tables of the T distribution. We have all the information in the sample that we need in order to estimate the mean of the population. So this formula is extraordinarily useful. If we have some large or infinitely large population 
and we wish to know the mean of that population. All we require is a random sample from that population. And based on that sample, we can make a statement about the mean of the population and make that statement with a stated degree of confidence. So let's use this formula. We can apply it to any population we like. This example says a random sample of flight times last year between Dublin and Edinburgh gave the following results in minutes. So we're interested to know what was the average flight time? What was the mean flight time between Dublin and Edinburgh last year? So we take a random sample and there it is, a sample of five flight times. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. So in this sample, we have everything that we need. From the sample, we will calculate the sample mean X bar. We will calculate the sample standard deviation estimate S. We will calculate the sample size N, which is five. And then we will look up the tables of T to find the appropriate values, value of T. So here goes X bar is 47.2 minutes. You can do this with your calculator in stat mode. S, the sample standard deviation is 3.19 minutes. N, the sample size is five. And it says there that T is 2.776. How do we get that value? Let me show you. Here is a copy of the T distribution tables. Our sample size is five, so five minus one is four. So our degrees of freedom down the leftmost column our degrees of freedom is four. So the column on the left, we're going to enter the table at row number four. Now, you'll notice a little sketch of the T distribution at the top of the slide, that one tail is shaded. We want plus and minus a certain T-score. So we want two tails which together comprise 5% of the distribution. We want 95% interval in the middle, and the remaining 5% made up of the two tails. That means that each single tail comprises 2.5%. So we will look in the column, which is headed 0 0.025, which is the third column across. So we look under 0 0.025, and in the row that has 4 in the leftmost column, and we find that the T value is 2.776. So we substitute these numbers into the formula x bar, t, s and n. Everything on the right of the plus and minus sign is worked out as 3.96. That's the margin of error. So we have a point estimate, 47.2 minutes, and we have a margin of error, 3.96 minutes. And we know that that margin of error is not exceeded. We can say that with 95% confidence. So we apply the minus sign and get a lower figure of 43.24. Then we apply the plus sign and we get an upper figure of 51.16 and these are the two limits. So we can say that mu, the population mean, lies between these two limits. In words we can say, we can state with 95% confidence that the mean flight time for all the flights between Dublin and Edinburgh last year lies between 43.24 and 51.16 minutes. Now notice that we are making a statement about mu, the population mean. We are not saying how long a particular flight took. We are saying what was the mean flight time of all the flights. And we also specifically mentioned the population. We drew a sample from last year's flight times. So we're making a statement about how long the mean flight time was last year. We cannot make a statement about some other population of flight times which we have not sampled. So in our statement we draw attention to the fact that this is the mean of a population, and we specify what the population is, all the flight times between Dublin and Edinburgh last year. So there's our confidence interval statement. So that's how we calculate the confidence interval for a population mean. We're going to move on now, if you're ready, to look at confidence intervals for a population proportion. So when we take a sample from a population in order to find out the population proportion, we use P to denote the sample proportion. P is R divided by N, where N is the sample size and R is the number of units in the sample which possess the attribute of interest. So if we're looking at the proportion of defective units of product, N is the number of units in the sample, and R is the number of defective units that were defective in the sample. So R over N 
gives us a value p, which is the sample proportion, the proportion of the units in the sample that were effective. And this then can be used to estimate the proportion of the units in the population that are effective. We use the Greek letter pi, which is the Greek letter p, to denote the population proportion. Now I know that pi is used elsewhere to represent different things, but in statistics we use pi to denote the population proportion. It's the Greek letter p, and always we use Greek letters to represent population parameters, and English letters to represent their sample estimates. So in order to estimate pi, the population proportion, uh, we say pi equals p, which is the sample proportion, which is the unbiased point estimate, plus or minus 1.96, which of course provides you with 95% confidence, times the square root of p into 1 minus p over n. So that quantity is the estimated standard error of a proportion, root p into 1 minus p over n. Here's an example of estimating a population proportion. Out of 50 students randomly selected from a college, 16 had been bitten by a dog at some time. Construct an approximate 95% confidence interval for the population proportion. That is the proportion of all the students in the college who had been bit by a dog. So we take our sample data, n equals 50, p equals 16 over 50. So p is 16 over 50, which is 0.32. 32% of the students in the sample had been bitten. Uh, then we substitute into the formula pi equals 0 0.32 plus or minus 1.96 times the square root of 0 0.32 times 1 minus 0 0.32 over 50. Working out everything on the right hand side of the plus minus sign gives us 0 0.13. So that's the margin of error. So the point estimate is 32% with a margin of error of 13%. We apply the minus sign giving us 19% or 0 0.19. And we apply the plus sign, giving us 45% or 0.45. So we can say that pi, the population proportion, lies inside that interval. So in words, we say we can state with approximately 95% confidence that between 19% and 45% of all students in the college had been bitten by a dog at some time. So again, notice that we're referring to the population that we uh, studied and we're referring to the particular attribute that's of interest to us. You can read more about this and also attempt some problems by going to the textbook and section 4b.